Hey, what is going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I'll be reviewing the Reebok Legacy Lifter 3. So three pros that I have with the Legacy Lifter 3 is number one, if you're investing in a shoe for squats or even some Olympic lifting, like the shoe will be a strong performing shoe. It performs pretty much the same as the Legacy Lifter 2, delivers a good level of stability, and you have a nice level of traction with its outsole. So if you're investing in this shoe for a little bit of everything regarding squats, Olympic lifting, and even some recreational lifts on machines and whatnot, I think you will like the overall performance of this shoe. It is once again consistent with the Legacy Lifter 2. The second pro that I could see folks having with this model is that if you are a diehard Reebok fan and you were a huge fan of the pump when that was a thing in like the 90s, then I do think you will enjoy the pump system on this model. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this. I'll talk about that in my cons, but I do see the novelty of this and like it giving the shoe a nice little niche spin. So if you do like that kind of like nod to that throwback original pump system in Reebok shoes, then I could see you enjoying this feature. And I do think it makes this model a little bit different than other models on the market. My third pro with this shoe is its overall security and stability. So with this model, you have a nice deep boot, you have a nice high ankle cup here, so heel security and support should not be an issue. And then you also have a thick midfoot strap here. This midfoot strap I find provides plenty of security for the foot, and you can adjust that strap a little bit if you need to, so I do like that as well regarding its overall base. So if you do need more volume, for example, you can kind of elongate that. So it does add a nice range of midfoot security for different foot anatomies. But overall, the Reebok Legacy Lifter 3 has been a pretty well-rounded shoe. However, I do have a couple knocks against this model. So now let's talk about my cons with this shoe. All right, so three cons that I have with the Legacy Lifter 3 is number one, I'm not a fan of the pump system. So I get that for some folks it's nostalgic, it's kind of like that novelty of the shoe, but realistically, the Legacy Lifter 3 is a Legacy Lifter 2, but you now have an increased price point of $20, and you have a pump system that doesn't really make this shoe a stronger performer. I had find the Legacy Lifter 2 to have security issues, and honestly, I found that I used the pump system literally once, found really no difference, and honestly, I just didn't like how it made the tongue like kind of push my foot down into this narrower toe box. So personally, I have just found that I don't even use the pump system, so it's like, cool, you're paying extra for a feature that doesn't even necessarily improve the shoe, and the shoe is essentially the predecessor of the Legacy Lifter 2. So overall, I'm not that big of a fan of the pump system, them. The second con that I have with the shoe is that it is still pretty dang narrow. And so looking at the last constructions, for example, of the Legacy Lifter 2 over here and the 3, it is pretty much the exact same width. I would even argue that the 2 feels a little bit wider because the upper, I think, gives you a little bit more volume compared to the leathery upper in the Legacy Lifter 3's toe box. And on top of this, the Nano X3's toe box is actually wider than the Legacy Lifter 3. So I'm not a huge fan of that. And I think if you have wider feet, you will want to steer clear of the Legacy Lifter 3 because I'm not convinced you're going to have enough width in this shoe. As you can see, it is a pretty slim toe box in this model. And to say it's wider than the Legacy Lifter 2's last construction and width, I think that's a reach. The third con that I have with this model, and I touched on this briefly in my first point, is that the shoe has received a price point increase of $20 USD for not many features that are going to drastically improve the shoe's performance. So I think you're basically getting a Legacy Lifter 2 here with a pump for an extra $20. So if you don't have $220 USD to drop, I would say look around for Legacy Lifter 2s. Those are pretty dang strong shoes, and if they're on sale, I think you'll be way better off with that model versus dropping full price for this, or even look into other budget-friendly models that might not have that high price point that is over 200 USD for kind of like a subpar weightlifting shoe, to be quite honest. But now let's talk about the performance of this model. To cover the performance of the Reebok Legacy Lifter 3, I'll talk about the shoe's performance in the context of squats, weightlifting, and then more recreational lifting, so using these for like accessories or machines. So when it comes to squats, I like this shoe, and I really liked the Legacy Lifter 2. I've competed in that model. I like how it's a little bit heavier. It gives you that nice anchored feel, and I like the grip you get with the outsole and that thicker boot construction back here to really lock down that heel. So in the context of squats, whether it be like heavier back squats, front squats, etc., the Legacy Lifter 3, I think, will be a strong performing shoe. The TPU heel is very stable, and the overall last construction, I think, should give you a nice stability throughout the entirety of the foot. So when it comes to squats, I'm a fan of Legacy Lifter 3. However, it is basically a Legacy Lifter 2, and I liked that shoe for squats, so it makes sense why I also like the Legacy Lifter 3. When it comes to weightlifting, I also enjoy this shoe. However, there is a subtle thing that I found with this model that I wasn't a fan of on top of its narrower toe box, and that is the strap construction here. So 
I think for most folks and for probably like the majority of lifters, you should have enough security with the strap. But if you check this out, the strap actually gets cut right here. Whereas in the Legacy Lifter 2, it went all the way down to that TPU midsole. So what I found is that if I didn't wear thicker socks with this shoe, I had to actually really crank this thing tight and I had to actually use the pump system. This was on the first day I used this, so I kind of learned like, okay, wear thicker socks for my next session, then I don't have to crank the strap, then I don't really have to use this dang pump system because I didn't like how it felt on my foot. So that is something to keep in mind with a shoe is that if you have a low volume foot and you constantly find yourself having to like pull your straps really tight in your weightlifting shoes, that might be something to actually consider with this model and truthfully like, I don't want you to have to rely on the pump system to give you midfoot security. Like I'm not the biggest fan of that idea and longevity wise, I'm not convinced that that's gonna be the best play. But when it comes to weightlifting overall, like the shoe has been pretty solid, it's stable. It does have a heavier build to it. So if you like heavier weightlifting shoes, I think you'll like that as well. And you get a nice level of ankle support and upper support in this. So you shouldn't have spillover issues whatsoever when catching weight. Now I will say once again, the toe box is pretty dang narrow. So if you find that you like a little bit more width to display the toes, this may not be the best option for you for weightlifting. When it comes to recreational lifting and using this model for like accessories and machine work, the shoe also performs pretty dang well. Good stability, good traction, so I really can't fault it for that context. However, it is pretty heavy. So for example, if you're doing like a quad bias lunge and you want to wear your weightlifting shoes for that to help drive that knee more forward over the toe, this may not be the best model in the context that it is pretty heavy and it's not going to give you the most articulation like something like an Innovate Fastlift Power G380, but it will work for most folks. So I wouldn't necessarily stress that detail. Just keep in mind that it is a pretty heavy weightlifting shoe compared to others on the market. So when it comes to the price of the Reebok Legacy Lifter 3, you can expect to pay $220 USD. And personally, I know I've touched on this, but I find that price point to be a little bit high for what this shoe is. I would have preferred that it stayed like 200 USD, to be quite honest, since it is pretty similar to the Legacy Lifter 2. I just don't know if that pump is worth an extra 20 USD. So if you can find the Leg Lifter 2s on sale, I would say reach for them. And I would say if you're not really sold in the pump system and kind of like the overall construction of this shoe, you could probably find weightlifting shoes for considerably less that will perform just as strong as this model in the gym. All right, so now let's answer the question, who are the Reebok Legacy Lifter 3 going to be best for. So I think if you're somebody who enjoyed the Legacy Lifter 2 and their overall performance and that pump system on this shoe, like kind of hits that nostalgia factor for you and you have the means to pay for the shoe or you could find them on sale, then I do think this shoe is going to be worth it. I also think it's a weightlifting shoe that will resonate really well with narrower and neutral width feet. Now that being said, what don't I like about this shoe and who shouldn't invest in this shoe? So truthfully, I think if you're looking into this model and you can find the Legacy Lifter 2 on sale and save yourself a couple of bones, I would say go for the Legacy Lifter 2 because this shoe is pretty much the exact same thing. And also this shoe has kind of just been like a letdown in my opinion because with its narrower toe box and with a pump system that I think most lifters are not necessarily going to use for all of their sessions. It just seems kind of gimmicky or almost like a Legacy Lifter 2.5. I think after the Legacy Lifter 1 dropped and then we had the 2 and it was like a full rework, I was hoping for more of a rework with the shoe or at least improvements that would make it drastically better in the gym, but I don't think we've really got that with this model and all we have got is an increased price point of $20 USD and a pump system that again, I don't think most lifters are going to use. So. While the shoe is a pretty strong shoe, it's just fine at that. And honestly, there are a lot of great options on the market right now that are going to cost a little bit less. When it comes to the sizing and fit in the Reebok Legacy Lifter 3, I think if you have a narrow width or neutral width foot, you should be safe going true to size in this model. If you have wide feet, honestly, I would say just pass on this shoe because even if you size up, I'm not convinced you're gonna have enough width and then you run into the issue of potentially having heel slip and with that strap that now has a little bit less surface area down here to really pull tight, I would say just pass on this shoe, save yourself the trouble of having to do the return process. And if you have worn the Reebok Legacy Lifter 2 at that, go with the same size in the Legacy Lifter 3 if you're planning on investing in them and you've worn the twos. All right, so now let's break down the weight, heel to toe drop, and insole in the Legacy Lifter 3. For my size 10 model here, we have a weight of 23.10 ounces. This model's effective heel height is 22 millimeters. That comes out to about 0 0.86, 0 0.87 inches. And this model does have a removable insole. So we have this insole construction here, and this insole has a little bit of a density to its foam padding here. All right, now let's break down the construction of the Legacy Lifter 3. So up here at the toe box, we have a leather upper that extends from the forefoot into the midfoot. And then we kind of have this mesh and textile upper that extends from the midfoot back here into the heel. We also have this TPU wrap or like rubbery wrap here to help give you additional boot security. And then looking at the heel back here, we have a pretty deep boot cut with some Reebok branding as well. Looking at the midfoot construction in this shoe, 
We have that singular midfoot strap going across, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six core eyelets going up. And once again, you can adjust this strap a little bit. However, it does not go all the way down to the boot or midsole of the shoe. So that is something to keep in mind with this model strap, but it does have a good level of security in my opinion. And then looking at the tongue, that's where this pump system comes into play here. So the tongue itself is pretty thick. And so essentially what you do is You'll pump the tongue up to give you a little bit more security when you're training. And then when you want to release that air, you hit this metal guy in and then it should drain all the air out of the tongue. Looking at the midsole, we have a TPU midsole that extends throughout a pretty thick rubber outsole layer up here in the forefoot. And then looking at the outsole, we have a full rubber tread patterning and it has that same outsole tread that the Legacy Thunder 2 has. Once again, we do have a removable insole in this shoe, but that pretty much wraps up the gist of this model's construction. If you have additional questions on this model, drop a comment down below. All right, so now let's cover some similarities and differences between the Legacy Lifter 3 and the Legacy Lifter 2. So when it comes to similarities that you can expect, the first similarity is their outsole construction. So both shoes have a very similar tread patterning, pretty much the exact same outsole, and they both have a similar midsole. So both shoes have this TPU cut back here on the boot, and they have like this thicker rubber through the forefoot here serving as its midsole. And then looking at another similarity, we do have that same midfoot strap in this model regarding where it's placed and its overall thickness. Now, now there is that difference though of the surface area down here on the base of the Legacy Lifter 2 strap versus the 3. I like the Legacy Lifter 2 is a little bit better because it does give you a bit more surface area. I'm always a fan of that because that means it will typically work for a wider range of foot anatomies and different security needs. And then overall, those are probably like the main core similarities between these shoes. Now obviously there are some other similarities like the leathery upper, the toe boxes, but for the most part, like those are very similar in these models. Now talking differences, the Legacy Lifter 3's upper has has been reworked so we now have like a thicker leather upper and then some textile overlays going into the midfoot and then back here into the heel and with the boot back here this is now like more of like a rubbery material versus like a tpu in the legacy lifter 2. in the legacy lifter 2 we had this leather upper that extended from the forefoot into the midfoot and then back here we had a pretty padded boot and we had like this rubbery tpu layer here this feels a little bit more dense in this model compared to the three and then another major difference is obviously the pump system so in the legacy lifter 3 here we now have the pump system going through the tongue and so essentially Essentially, this increases the volume of the tongue to help give you additional security. And something that took me a minute to realize with this model is that the lacing system is more of like a traditional lacing system. So we have this internal looping system on the main sides of the shoe. Now in the Legacy Lifter 2, Something that I don't think a lot of folks realize necessarily right out of the gate with this model is that the top eyelets here are actually on an internal piece of material. So this gives this shoe a little bit more midfoot security in my opinion. And I think maybe that's why the pump system does help because you don't have that internal lacing system in the midfoot of that model. But this is something that's different with these two shoes and their midfoot securities. That's why I think I actually resonate better with the two's midfoot security as well, because it gives you like a nice lockdown feeling in my opinion without having to crank the strap so tight. And then looking at the tongue, obviously it does not have the pump, it's just a padded mesh tongue. And then looking at the insole constructions, because I know there will be more questions about the fit of each model. So this is the insole of the two, this is the insole of the three. They are pretty much the exact same. That's why I'm not exactly convinced that the three is necessarily wider. Like if they are any different, it's by a couple millimeters. So I don't know if that's necessarily gonna translate for most folks, especially now that there are options on the market that do have significantly wider toe boxes compared to these two shoes, but they are very similar regarding their overall fit and their overall width. So that is something that you can expect to also have as a similarity between the Leg Lifter 2 and Leg Lifter 3. All right guys, that wraps up my review of the Reebok Legacy Lifter 3. Overall, this shoe has been okay. It will work well for most folks. However, I find it to be a little bit gimmicky and honestly, I was hoping for a little bit more with this model compared to the Legacy Lifter 2. But if you have additional questions on this model, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, drop a like on the video, drop a subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. The <laughs> top